We're going to mill out this shape in a small piece of pine. It has a quarter inch bore and a place for a quarter inch fender washer. The drawing gives us our dimensions and full geometry. Once our part is designed, we're going to move into the manufacturing tab. And right now we have nothing set up. This part was designed in inches and is going to be machined in inches. To create a new setup, click the setup at the top and it will fall underneath the setup tabs. For our operation type, we're going to choose milling. For our orientation, we're going to choose model orientation. For our origin, we're going to use stock box point. And for the box point, we're going to choose the center. We're cutting a circle, so out of a rectangular piece of stock. So we'll use the top center of the piece. And you can see that sits on top of the stock. For the model, if nothing is selected, we can always go through our models here and select this component. The stock that we've selected is a small piece of pine. And instead of relative size box, we'll choose a fixed size box since we're measuring off existing stock. Your stock might differ slightly, but this is about 3.5 by 3.5, and the height is about one. You can change where your part rounds up. So if it was 3.453, then you would maybe include to uh, a nearest decimal. Right now, the model position in the X and Y should be in the center. That will give us the greatest room for any error that we're off. And as far as the height in the Z, where it's a center, I'm going to say the offset from the bottom. And if I look at the front view, where it says offset, I'm going to change this to 0.1. This is the part under here that I'm going to face. So the first setup is going to be this top geometry. Our second is going to be doing this face. So we'll hit OK. I'm going to create another setup. And this is going to be for the facing operation on the bottom to make sure that the bottom is square with the machine. For orientation, I'm going to select Z axis or Y axis. I need to flip the orientation of this Z so that this is the top of the model. So I'm going to click the Z and the X and it asks me where I want my stock box point and make sure to select the top of the stock. Now I'm going to flip my Z axis and again just double check and make sure that that gets selected. And for my model, I will choose my component. No fixture again. For the stock, I'm going to do a fixed size. I'm going to enter the same dimensions I entered before. And for the model position here, I'm going to set offset from the top and the same thing, 0.1. And let's double check to make sure that I did that correctly. So that's that same dimension. And here, I'll just keep that consistent. I'll hit OK. Now I have two setups. Our first operation is going to be a 2D face. Make sure that the setup that you're using is activated. To make this clear, I'll call this a face operation, and I will call this part. I'm going to choose 2D face. We're going to input a tool. If you'd like to check the geometry of this tool, you can right click edit tool. And here we can see it's a flat end mill. It has two flutes. The diameter is a little under quarter inch. The body should be about the same. It's about a quarter inch for the shaft diameter. The flute length on this tool was 0.75 and that shoulder length was 1.25. The machine that 
we're using will automatically check the tool depth. So we don't totally need to worry about how far the tool is sticking out. We'll do that in the machine. I'm gonna hit okay. And now my tool is selected. There is no coolant. The next tab is my stock contours. So what am I cutting out? Where it says nothing, I'm gonna to try to cut the entire part here. So I don't need to select anything. I don't wanna select the part, I want the stock to be cut. As for the heights, I'm gonna start from the bottom. And the bottom height should be at this point the model top. And what we can do is create a really tiny offset here, 0.01, just to leave a little bit of extra breathing room. And we'll come back and do a finishing pass. The top height is going to be the stock top. And then our feed, retract, and clearance can stay the same. If you look at this from the side, our bottom height is slightly above the part. Our top height here is where our stock is located. And then our other heights we're going to worry about later. Let's move to the passes tab. We're going to mill in both directions. And that'll hopefully clear up a lot of scalloping. And for our step over, let's start with doing half the bit and seeing what it looks like. So that would be 0.125. A single depth, this part, we could take a bunch of steps down, but we don't need to. Where it says stock to leave, we've actually incorporated this into our offset. So we don't need to worry about that, but that's another way to do that. As far as the linking tab, this is where the part starts and stops and comes back. And we want to have a small lead in entry so we don't jab the tool in. Let's see what the uh, default settings provide for us. And we're gonna hit okay. I'm gonna roll my part and now you can see my tool path lines. I'm gonna simulate this just so we can see what is going on and I'll add the stock. I will put material and I'm gonna change this to wall paint. I'll zoom out a little and let's just see what happens when we run our part. And I'll speed that up. This looks pretty good and the tool overhangs quite a bit. But I'm gonna go back real quick and edit this tool path. And if we look at the geometries, we still have the stock, so that's fine. The heights, they look pretty good. And we know that we have a 0.01 offset. As far as the passes, the pass extension here, or the stock offset allows us to go past where the stock is. And same with the pass extension, that allows us to go further than the stock in one of the directions. So let's try to surpass the stock offset by the whole bit. So I'm gonna put 0.25 inches. I'm also going to now increase the step over. So let's look at how much closer this gets, and we'll put 0.23, so that's almost the entire bit. Let's hit OK. It's going to calculate, and we'll simulate this. And we can see the bit is much farther out, and in the x direction here, it is also much further out. So we have a longer operation, but we fully clear the part and we come back in, which is very nice. This looks like a good operation and we could move forward knowing that we have 0.01 on the bottom of our stock extra. I'll close this. I wanted to just complete this setup and operation. I'm going to click on the face setup and I'm going to go to my post process. I'd like to set up the configuration folder. 
I'm going to choose Carbide 3D. That's the first CNC machine that we're going to use. You can choose your output folder. I'm just going to throw this in the desktop. This should have a .nc extension, and we can call this facing for our wheel. And it's, it asks us to open and see an editor. I'm going to uncheck this for now. And I'm just posting this facing operation. You can post all of the setups if you'd like, but for now we're just facing. So I'm going to hit post. Ask me to save my part to the desktop. I'll say yes. I can find my .nc file. And just to double check it, if you have a text editor, you can open the .nc. Just in Notepad, we can see the G code for this operation. We got our face, our tooling, our spindle speed, 